activity in the southwest region of Cameroon, same time right here in Akwa Dwala. Good evening, dear viewers of Equinox Television. This is a 6 p.m. edition of the primetime newscast on Equinox Television. First, I'm Mrs. Terry's. Cameroonian born Philemon Young is on the way to becoming the 79th president of the UN General Assembly. As of now, he is the lone candidate for the presidency that will be taking place in New York in some few hours from now. The astute diplomat was endorsed as Africa's candidate on the sidelines of the 44th ordinary session of the Executive Council at the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa. Tonight, we'll take you via the journey of the high position. And from big city it is to hinterlands, bad roads continues to be a major threat to development. Tonight, we'll be taking you to the Monaco neighborhood in Bipanda, Dollar 5 subdivision. Residents here say the dilapidated state of their roads has made life a living hell, and you'll be getting your reactions in the course of this newscast. Stay with us for details and more. Thank you so much for choosing Equinox Television for presentation. I am Immaculate Fogwe. A total of 37,958 packs of illicit drugs have been seized by elements of the Cameron Navy under the command of Jean-Michel Fugue. According to sources, the drugs that were being smuggled into Cameroon were coming from abroad. We have details with our reporter, Cedric Chakutu. Following an operation launched on the night of June 3rd to June 4th, 2024, the Cameroon Navy, under the command of Navy Captain Jean-Michel Fugue, the commander of the Douala Naval Base, seized some 31 boxes of illicit drugs at the coast of Cameroon. These boxes contain 29 closed packets of fake drugs, 26 medical specialties including antibiotic, contraceptives, anti-malaria, calcium and antispasmodics estimated with a financial value of about 60 million francs CFA. The naval patrol of the naval base of Douala has seized this truck by the coordination of his command under the supervision of the rear admiral chief of uh, naval staff. It's an important quantity of drugs who have been seized. We are continuing to count all these drugs. These drugs coming from abroad are arriving at a time where the Cameroon Medical Council gave restrictions to pharmacies for the selling of drugs without a doctor's prescription. These fake drugs are coming from abroad, so we are working to identify all the, the origins, but if they are not uh, made in Cameroon. While investigations on their origin continues, the commander announced the destruction of the drugs seized. Also in this newscast, we'll be showing you the poor state of the Monaco stretch of road in the Mbepanda neighborhood, Douala 5 subdivision. The said road has been in a deplorable state for several years. Residents say the state of the road is having an adverse consequences on business activities. Malaglory takes us to the Monaco stretch of road in her report. This is Monaco stretch of road in Bepanda, in the Douala 5 municipality. It's one of the significant roads in the neighborhood because of other roads that could be connected from here. Especially the fact that it leads to Bepanda Reunification Stadium, a reason why it's quite busy. However, in the last couple of years, Monaco stretch, including other streets in the Dweller 5 subdivision, have gradually deteriorated and the impact on the users and residents is of concern. First, economic operators complain that this poor route has greatly affected via businesses. La plupart des clients qu'on a de ce côté-ci préfèrent entrer dans les quartiers juste pour éviter euh, les mardes qui sont là, comme vous voyez là, ils ne parviennent pas. Je ne pense pas qu'il y ait une rue principale qui va au stade, stade de la réunification, que tout le monde passe là-bas. Cette rue devait être censée aménager avant d'autres routes, dans le plein cœur de la ville. 
Regardez comment les activités sont mortes ici, là, partout. Rien ne marche plus ici. Residents are also concerned that local authorities may have had their priorities mixed up as the road has been abandoned. En saison sèche, on a essayé de baisser, on a essayé de baisser les graviers et tout et qu'on sort. Mais en saison pluvieuse, c'est comme si on a abandonné ces routes. Mais on, a, on est en train de voir et, et, et un peu de partout, on essaie d'arranger les routes. Et, mais celle-ci, c'est comme si le gouvernement s'est abandonné. Once again, it's rainy season and no signs of constructions are ongoing on the stretch. The heavy rains announced in the city of Douala caused the inhabitants considerable worry. And a similar story for several years, inhabitants of Jungurai, a village in the Mongo division, have been complaining about their precarious living conditions. Added to that, they say the village has been without a chief, a situation that has slowed down development activities in the area. These challenges were raised to the new chief who was recently installed. Asia Lusiangu presents to us Jungurai. The deplorable state of the road linking Jungurai to Njombe and other localities in the Mongol division is a challenge for road users. For the past five years, vehicles get stuck due to the slippery nature of the road and the large potholes found on the stretch. Franchement, même le chef lui-même avait dit que normalement, c'est vous qui de nous route. An inhabitant explains since the death of the chief for five years now, the village has been abandoned. The absence of a good road network, which has slowed down economic activities, among other problems, were put forward to the new chief. This was during his installation ceremony, presided by the divisional officer of Mombo, Bechuang, Momo Sofak. May try say my road must be. See people than day before. May then give you water. The light where they cut every day. Say may the light. We try to get light for us. Chief Emmanuel Bless Bayong has been tasked to develop the village by solving the problem of water shortage, power failure, and others. Having heard the plights of his people, the new chief says. So today, we believe that together we will work. Together, they will see the outcome of what they will give, their participation. Because if they don't give, they are the ones suffering with not having the road and impacting it in our society, in our community. The message of Chief Emmanuel during the installation ceremony is a relief for the people who also hope for quality education and health services. And on to other news, despite the ministerial decision of April 28, 2022, the sale of land continues illicitly in the Vina division at the region of Cameroon. Authorities say this practice unfortunately implicates traditional rulers who do so without due competence. Apart from land tenure-related problems, the Vina is also faced with a host of chieftaincy disputes. These problems are part of the hot files on the table of Norbert Kwaila, Senior Divisional Officer for the Vina Division. Fomi Armstrong Sander reports. Responding to numerous land disputes and related conflicts, the government of Cameroon on April 28, 2022, suspended the sale of lands in some 20 out of the 58 divisions in Cameroon, including the Vina Division. However, the administrative unit is still to abide to this decision, according to the senior divisional officer for the Vina, Mr. Norbert Quella. An observation made during a tour of some private and public institutions within his area of command. Norbert Quella observed that many traditional rulers in the Vina sell lands even without due competencies. We try to call their attention that what they are doing is against the law. We should always act according to the law. Regarding dysfunctionalities observed in chieftaincy procedures, the senior administrator dished out recommendations to divisional officers. I instructed the divisional officers to respect the regulation in force. Especially, they have to be sure that the candidates to the chieftaincy are from the royal family. Secondly, the notable should be those chosen by the late form 
and signed by him and signed by the divisional officer. And if they did not list of that, they should, with their experience and in consultation with the notable, form the list of a notable. I insist that they should do their best that the fund or the traditional ruler that will be designed should belong to the royal family. His field mission was in strict compliance to the recommendations received during his installation ceremony from the governor of the Adama region, Kildadi Tajeke Bukar. And now we talk politics. Political analysts say the wave of infighting and fragmentations rocking the opposition political parties in Cameroon today is 2025 in gestation. Analyzing the remote and immediate causes of a political analyst accuses the ruling CPDM party of pulling the strings. He goes further to say the CPDM party is also suffering from a silent internal squabble. From Yam Strong Center once more reports. Like the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation, the PCRN Party, the Movement for the Defense of the Republic, the MDR Party, the Progressist Movement Party, the MP, the National Citizens Movement Party, the NCMP, the Alliance of Progressive Force, the AFP, and many other opposition political parties in Cameroon are currently being rocked by a wave of infighting and power tussle. This has raised a host of questions among Cameroonians, some questioning the remote and immediate causes, the timing and the dramas as presented to political analyst Mr. Kinang Derrick. The political system within which we find ourselves, which helps in fragilizing the opposition and making it impossible for them to be firm due to existing interests. We discover that each and every time the opposition comes and is united, and takes measures to be firm. They look for some bad seats, either from outside to inject into it, or from within the system or within the opposition. They get the gullibles within it to destroy the same system. Kinang Derrick says this cannot be separated from the elections coming up in Cameroon in 2025. I strongly believe it is 2025 that is already in gestation. The ruling party is doing everything possible to put in place needed strategies to ensure that they stick and stay in power. And so what is going on now is the search and the quest to take exercise and maintain power. Why the CPGM is doing everything possible to see into it that 2025 will maintain power. The opposition is doing the, everything possible to see into it that 2025 they take over power. Analyzing further, Kinang Derek sees the ruling CPGM party as also trapped in internal squabbles. You know, everybody is conscious of the fact that His Excellency President Paul Bia, though still very firm, but is gradually taking an exit when it comes to political life in Cameroon, even going by, by nature. So it is but certain that you see the inner battles within the political party that is on in power, the CPGM itself. Like him, keen political observers and many other Cameroonians see the infighting and fragmentations adopted by the ruling Cameroon People's Democratic Movement Party ahead of 2025. Coming up next, Babila Jonathan looks at the stakes of the upcoming June parliamentary session. One of the issues expected to be discussed during the session is a financial scandal rocking both chambers. His report. From June 11, 2024, members of Cameroon's parliament will start examining the stakes of the June session of parliament. The members of the lower house of parliament are convened at 11 a.m. and the senators at 4 p.m. at the temporary parliamentary house in the Yaoundé Conference Center. They will exercise in a collegial manner their constitutional mission of passing laws and controlling government action. They will proceed to the examination and adoption of the first laws of the 2024 legislative year after the opening parliamentary session in March was devoted mainly to the election of officials of the lower and upper houses of parliament and general committees. 
a vote which maintained House Speaker Kavai Yeke Jibril and Senate President Marcel Nyat Njifendia their respective positions. The June 2024 session will open in a particular context marked by allegations of embezzlement of billions of francs CAV in the National Assembly and the Senate with some top officials indicted. Complaints from citizens regarding registration on the electoral list, questions of inflation, power cuts, inadequate supply of portable water, deterioration of roads, and persistent security crisis, particularly in the northwest, southwest, and far north regions, also constitute challenges that are expected to be discussed in Parliament. The 30 day session will also be a dedicated space to discuss budgetary orientations in view of the examination and adoption of the state budget for the 2025 financial year in November. And on to our major late story, Cameron's former Prime Minister and Grand Chancellor of the National Order, Philemon Young, is standing as the only candidate to the position of President of the United Nations 79th General Assembly. The election later today is the culminating point of several steps taken by the diplomat. Babla Jonathan takes us via the journey to the high position. Rule 30 of the United Nations Rules of Procedure states that unless the General Assembly decides otherwise, the General Assembly shall elect a president and 21 vice presidents at nine, at least three months before the opening of the session over which they are to preside. The president and the vice presidents so elected will assume their functions only after the beginning of the session for which they are elected and shall hold office until the close of that session. The president of the United Nations General Assembly is a position voted by representatives in the United Nations General Assembly every year. The president is the chair and presiding officer of the General Assembly. The session of the assembly is scheduled for every year starting in September. Any special or emergency special assemblies over the next year will be headed by the president of the United Nations General Assembly. The presidency rotates annually between the five geographic groups, Africa, Asia Pacific, Eastern European, Latin American and Caribbean, and Western Europe and other states. In addition to the president, a slate of 21 vice presidents are elected for each General Assembly session. The vice presidents have the same powers and duties as the president, and the president may designate one of them to cover his absence from any meeting or part thereof. The lone candidate as of now, Cameroon's former Prime Minister, Philemon Young, has gone through the procedure culminating to the election. On May 8, 2024, he presented his vision and mission statement during the informal interactive dialogue presided at by the President of the 78th General Assembly, Denis Francis, by Resolution 71-323 of the United Nations, titled Revitalization of Work of the General Assembly. After the presentation, Philemon Young answered questions on some key issues, including the role of the United Nations General Assembly in the architecture of the United Nations, revitalization of the General Assembly, reform of the Security Council, enforcement of multilateralism and languages, the place of the civil society and youth, and promotion of human rights and gender. The election of the President of the 79th General Assembly of the United Nations will take place today at the World Organizations Hall in New York at 3 p.m. local time and about 9 p.m. Cameroon time. It will be presided at by the President of the 78th General Assembly alongside UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. After today's election, the elected president of the 79th UN General Assembly will wait for three months to begin work when the world meeting effectively begins. Babla Jonathan reporting there. And let's now get to know more about the unique candidate vying for the position of president of the 79th UN General Assembly. A reporter, Anna Bila, profiles him in her report. Former Prime Minister of Cameroon and current Grand Chancellor of National Order Philemon Young is set to assume the role of the next president of the 79th United Nations General Assembly. His impressive diplomatic experience and exceptional profile makes him fit and most suitable man for the job besides being a reliable continental candidate. 
Philemon Young's candidacy was endorsed during the 44th ordinary session of the AU Ordinary Council in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Young is running for the UN top position under the motto of support intercultural dialogue. He was designated by President Paul Bia and his candidacy officially presented to the diplomatic corps accredited to Yaoundé by the Minister for External Relations. The former member of parliament is also supported by heads of state and governments of the Economic Community of Central African States, ECAS, urging the entire African continent to rally behind Yang's candidacy, noting he is up to the task regarding his rich profile. Philemon Yang, the multilinguist, is chair of the African Union Eminent Personalities to discuss key issues of the continent. He served in the government from 1975 to 1984 and was Cameroon's ambassador to Canada from 1984 to 2004. Young was Assistant Secretary General at the Presidency with the rank of Minister from 2004 to 2009. From June 30, 2009 to January 4, 2019, Philemon Young served as Prime Minister. He had also joined the Commonwealth of Nations in 1995, earning him the title Commissioner. What you have noticed that the presence of the 79th UN General Assembly begins its term of office from September 24, 2024 to September 24, 2025. And now to health, the decision passed by the president of the Cameron Medical Council instructing pharmacists not to sell drugs to patients without a doctor's prescription has received mixed feelings. While some Cameronians believe it will reduce the high cop prevalence rate of auto-medication, others believe meeting up with the financial demands of the doctor and later a pharmacist is much more costly. I reported Malaglory compiled their views in this report for the 6 p.m. news. We have criticized the move taken by the Cameroon Medical Council restricting pharmacies from selling drugs without doctor's prescription. They argue that the country cannot boast of a good number of medical doctors. Report puts Cameroon's current doctor-patient ratio at one doctor per 50,000 persons. Il faut d'abord se dire, il y a combien de médecins au Cameroon par rapport à la population. Aujourd'hui, au Cameroun, il y a des infirmiers qui, envoient des, qui font des ordonnances. Il faut être sûr que dans toutes les régions du Cameroun, il y a un médecin. Mais dans notre pays, je ne sais pas, moi, vous regarderez sur Internet, je pense qu'il y a peut-être 10 000 médecins. Mais s'il y a 10 000 médecins, il faut savoir. Est-ce que le Camerounais moyen a la possibilité de rencontrer un médecin Est-ce que la consultation chez le médecin, le prix sera bas Ou alors, est-ce que la consultation sur le médecin sera gratuite According to a medical doctor, there exist drugs which you can buy without necessarily presenting a doctor's prescription. Il en existe dans le monde entier, c'est universel. Il y, a des, il, y a des, il y a des médicaments qui, euh, qui sont réservés euh, à, à prescription euh, uniquement euh, des médecins. Il y a des médicaments qu'on peut prendre euh, en pharmacie euh, sans, sans prescription médicale. Mais tout cela doit être réglementé. However, the repercussion for receiving wrong medications or dosage might have a severe, long and lasting consequences. Soit les, la pharmacie, on te donne l'eau sans pouvoir peut-être te consulter, sans connaître ce qui se passe sur ton te donne seulement les médicaments. Quand on te donne un médicament, toi aussi tu peux prendre sans connaître que c'est quelle maladie que tu es en train d'utiliser. Bon, ça fait les gens meurent beaucoup parce qu'on ne prend pas vraiment les médicaments qui conviennent à notre maladie. Following the communique made public by the Cameroon Medical Council, authorities need to address this problem, establish lasting measures for the well-being of patients in Cameroon. And still on our health page, humanitarian organizations and the Ministry of Women's Empowerment and the Family have urged the population, mostly those in the Fana region, to encourage and assist young girls during their menstrual flow. This is due to the fact that adolescent girls in the Fana region are still being stigmatized, causing many of them to feel insecure during such periods. The call was made during a workshop held in Marwa in the Fana region. AC Lusiliengu reports. In the far north region of the country, adolescent girls lack adequate knowledge of reproductive health and menstrual hygiene. As a result, young girls become shy, stressed, and decide to drop out from school during their menstruation period. 
La période des menstrues est une période trop, trop difficile pour les, les filles. To bridge the gap, stakeholders in education, alongside the Ministry of Women Empowerment and the Family, have launched projects and sensitization campaigns in schools in the Far North region with purpose to assist these young girls. To sensibilize, to create a group GHM in the establishment, to bring these girls to understand that the menstruals are not a disease; it's a thing of nature. And during a workshop held in Mara, some problems were raised, such as poor toilet facilities in schools, lack of sanitary pads, pushing most young girls to return home. Before this project, if a female student has his menstruation, she has to stay at home, or even if it happens to come while she is at school, she has to go back. But now we have some facilities to help them solve this problem whether they are in, our, in their classroom or in during the break i am very sure that it will also improve their their results during the exams because they are always in school with objective taking care of the needs of girls mostly during menstruation was predominant during the meeting chaired by the regional delegate of women empowerment and the family and away from health news the minister of sports and physical education says he has never excluded anyone from the organization of the upcoming fifa world cup qualifier match beating cameron and capeford Chief Professor Nassis Mwele Kombi made a declaration during the final preparatory meeting ahead of the day three qualifier encounter. Sports Minister is now calling on Cameroonians to mobilize behind the Lions to guarantee them their second victory. Smadji Kangebel, a sportsman, has the details. Like in the first preparatory meeting for the outing of the indomitable Lions, Professor Nkum Vondo represented the Cameroon Football Federation, Feka Foot, in the last session as the Lions prepare for Saturday's clash. The Minister of Sports and Physical Education, who presided at the last preparatory meeting, was very clear, making this recommendation to the Cameroon Football Federation. We are asking Feka Foot to create a favorable working condition for the head coach, creating a psychological atmosphere of frank and sincere collaboration with the head coach and his staff. Ahead of the indomitable Lions versus the Blue Sharks encounter, it's still not certain whether Mark Breeze will work with the staff of Faker Foot or that of the ministry, since it's alleged that the staff of Minserp wasn't accredited by FIFA. The sports minister sends this message to Faker Foot. They should consult the head coach on the technical staff members who will have to accompany him on the reserve bench or in the secured zones during the encounter. With the crisis going on between Feka Foot and Minsep, at one point, the FA withdrew the match tickets, but will later make a U-turn. The minister calls on all to collaborate for the smooth sale of the match tickets. You should ensure that the sale of tickets by Faker Foot are effective. And in case of any problem, you should readily provide palliative decisions, which is geared at getting many supporters who are secured, just like we did during the Nations Cup in Cameroon. 2021. Cameroon versus Cape Verde comes up on Saturday, June 8, 2024, 2 p.m. at the Akmadu Aijo Stadium in Yaoundé. And that sports element done by Smart Jikangiru ends this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your keen attention. See you tomorrow, same time, same hour. God willing, bye-bye for now.